to rock my way up. How's everyone doing? Doing good? Oh, um, we'll be in Romans. And, and uh, as I said, um, this is the introduction to Romans. So if you guys behave well out there, okay, there's a few of you I'm looking at specifically. If you behave well, this is the amount of stuff I have to talk about. It's one and a half sheets, okay? So if you amen at the right times, okay? if you laugh appropriately at all the jokes, there you go. Now, see, I don't know if that, that might border on inappropriate, but we'll see. See how I'm feeling. But that's, uh, you guys, we'll, we'll get at it. This is going to be good. I can't wait to teach Romans. Like, I was, so I was working on this a little bit last night and trying to decide how far I wanted to go today. And, and God just laid it on me. I'm not going to actually get into, I'm not going to teach Romans chapter 1 until next week. So this is just going to be kind of an introduction. And, and so I'm excited about this. And we're just, just going to lay out the good stuff, even some of the bad stuff that we're going to get into. Um, but the book of Romans is amazing. So as I, as I introduce this, I want us to think about the day that we find ourselves in right now, right? Do you, do you ever wonder how we got here, <laughs> right? Like, how, what, what is wrong with humanity? Amen. Like, like, have you ever wondered that? Like, you watch some, like, and I'm not, like, I don't want to get into, like, I watched a video of some guy walked up to a police car, I think it's in California, and just put two bullets into the police car and then runs off. They got on security camera, like, how does that happen? How, how, how do we get to this point where, where murder is f fairly common? Like, what is wrong with humanity? Well, if, I'm glad you asked me that question. <laughs> Over the next couple of months, we are going to dive into the problem that we find ourselves in. And as we look at the book of Romans, this is a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the believers of Jesus in Rome, or the believers of Jesus in Rome, and we are going to see what humanity's problem is actually is. Okay? Uh, Chris, the passage that will be in is Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Those are the only verses we'll, we'll use today. I've got some good news for you. I've got some bad news for you. Okay? The good, or sorry, the bad news first is that this problem that I'm talking about, it affects every single person on the planet. You and I are not immune to this problem. We are all actually or have all been infected with it. You and me and every person out there that we long and would love to see come to know Jesus Christ. The good news, there is a solution to this problem. Amen? Come on. The solution to the problem. There's one problem for every person, and there's one solution for every person. And I, I don't know about you, I'm already on the edge of my seat with excitement about what's coming. So let me give you a little background on Romans from the early church fathers. Uh, Martin Luther... This is the father of the Lutheran church. He started the Reformation about 500 years ago, and he wrote this about the book of Romans. This letter is the principal part of the New Testament and the purest gospel, which surely deserves the honor that a Christian man or woman should not merely know it by heart, word for word, but that he should be occupied with it daily as the daily bread for his soul. For it can never be read too often or too well. And the more it is used, the more delicious it becomes and the better it tastes. While the gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are so important, and they contain the life and stories of Jesus on earth, including his death, burial, and resurrection, what we learn in Romans is the content of the Christian faith. There is no better place in the entire New Testament that shows us how to live in this life the Christian life that Jesus has called us to. Even John Wesley, and John Wesley is the founder of the, the Methodist Church where we have derived our own uh, foundings from, and it's John Wesley is whose doctrine we follow in the Church of the Nazarene. He had his life changed when he was a part of the Anglican Church in England because of the Book of Romans. From his journal, Wesley writes on May 24th in 1738, 
In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's, back to Luther, Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my own heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ. Christ alone for salvation and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Two amazing founders of church, of, of the American church. And what we see with a lot of this stuff in our world today, people believe in God. They even believe in Jesus. But they've gotten away from the power of the word of God. There are a lot of people that like to rely even what they would think on what the Holy Spirit is, but they're, they're relying on what they think the Holy Spirit is without the Word of God informing them what the Holy Spirit is telling them to believe. And so instead of rely, believing what the Holy Spirit is telling them, what they're believing is their own feelings and their own opinions. And we need the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit speaking to us that we can learn what God wants us to be. And the book of Romans talks about that a lot. So we're going to talk about that a lot. What a, an amazing testimony, though, from John Wesley, that even just the reading of someone else's thoughts on this book of the Bible could bring about the assurance of faith that sets a person free from the law of sin and death. God changes our hearts through faith in Jesus Christ. He does not change our hearts. Here's where you can start to amen, okay? Just to give you a little preview. He does not change our hearts because we act right. Amen. He does not change our hearts because we say the right words at a time of prayer. He doesn't change our hearts because we sat in enough church services. He changes our hearts when we believe in Jesus Christ. Whew. We might want to work on that a little bit, but that's all right. We're getting there. So one of the passages that we're going to look at more deeply later on is Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And let me, let me read those for you real quick. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord... And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Here's the good stuff. You will be saved. Okay. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And, not just a baby, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So two things we got to do. we got to believe. we got to profess. We're going to talk about that in Romans a lot. Believe, and you will be saved. There are things that come with that belief, and we're going to talk about that. But we're already on like the last page. You guys are good. We will read in chapter 8. This is one of my favorite parts that we're going to get into. How we are now in the Spirit, right, the Spirit of God that frees us from the power of sin. If you have believed, you are saved, you are professing, you are saved, and then you become in the Spirit. The Spirit comes in you, and it frees you from the power of sin. There are so many other things that the Holy Spirit does that we will learn about in Romans. You do not want to miss any of the weeks. But when we talk about the Spirit of God being with us and in us, we're going to look at this pretty deeply. I want to give you a few other things as a preview of what God's Spirit does. We serve God in the Spirit. Anyone ever just say, Man, I do not want to help that person? And then something in you takes over. The Spirit says, oh, we got to take care of our brothers and sisters. And we help. We serve God in the Spirit. The Spirit imparts life to believers. Anyone ever been dead in their sin? The Spirit comes in and now you're alive? The Spirit imparts life in the believers. The Spirit frees them from the law of sin and death. We'll talk about that a lot in depth. The Spirit supplies power to the sons and daughters of God. Did you know... Did you know that there is a lot of power in sin? Anyone ever, ever experienced that? A lot of power in sin. And the problem that we've talked about, it's sin. We are all under it. Sin is powerful. It grabs us. It pulls us down. It starts to form us uh, into shapes that we don't even recognize sometimes. I, I don't know about you, but the, the problem that that all of us have been infected with, this sin problem, has made me do some really stupid and dumb and awful things. 
That wasn't meant to be laughed at, Bonnie. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've stolen things in my life. I have lied a lot. I have been mean to people. I have been selfish. I have been full of pride. I have been and done things that have shaped me into a person that at times I would have to hide myself, the, my true self, away from people. Because I didn't want them, the people that I love, to see who I'd become because of sin. So I put on a facade. I put on a, a mask. I hated being that person. And still, that's who I was because of sin, because of this problem. And we're going to learn over the course of this series that sin has a lot of power, and we are under it until something amazing happens, right? Jesus. Jesus has come to save us from our sins, but not only does he do that, he justifies us before God so that we can stand as righteous before him, just as if I had never sinned at all. That, that's what justified means, just as if I had never sinned at all. We need to get excited about that, folks. I am so grateful with the songs that we sing today and every day. Praise God for what he has done through Jesus Christ. Jesus justifies me before God. Jesus can justify you before God, even though you have the problem of sin. All because I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and I talk about it and I live it out. Jesus saves me, not because I have everything figured out. The really amazing part, once we get into a relationship with Jesus Christ, once we have accepted the truth that God raised him from the dead, once the Spirit comes in and starts to work in our lives, he's going to help us figure it all out. Amen? One of the key components of Romans is the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is, is found in the person of Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus that we are able to receive the righteousness of God. And one thing that we do have to remember, though, and Paul's going to talk about this over and over in Romans, we have the ability to choose the love and righteousness of God, or we can reject His love and remain unrighteous. We're going to read about that in chapter 1, and it's pretty awesome stuff. Throughout Romans, Paul's going to talk about the idea of man or humankind. He talks about the fall of man through the sin of Adam and Eve, and then he lets us know that Jesus came down to earth as a human in human flesh in order to bring the righteousness of God. It just keeps getting better and better. Now, if we have the problem of sin and we have the solution of Jesus, but we, we don't need to fix ourselves before we are able to grab a hold of the solution that is uh, the solution to fix our problem, how in the world do we live a life that is pleasing to God? I'm glad you asked that question as well. It goes back to that Holy Spirit and everything that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. So, finally, I just want to point out that I will continually reference the fact, the truth, that we have a choice to make. Every single one of us, from the youngest of you to the oldest, have a choice to make. We are choosing every single day and in every single moment whether or not we will accept the grace of God found in Jesus Christ or are we going to reject that grace through the sinful actions that we commit. God's grace is humongous. I, I believe that God's grace is bigger than we, even, even the, the person with the biggest idea of how big God's grace could be, God's grace is bigger. And he will continue to forgive those who genuinely seek after him. But one thing that my own human experience has taught me, and something that we will look at throughout this book of Romans, is that believing in Jesus and believing in the fact that God raised him from the dead requires something from us. Right? It requires uh, a response from us. If we say we believe and our lives do not reflect the change of heart that Martin Luther and John Wesley talked about and so many others have testified to, then that belief is not real. It is simply word games. And God sees right through that. We have to believe. And that belief has to drive us to action. I want to encourage you today to let God warm your heart in such a way that you are either convinced, as John Wesley was, that you have already given your whole self over to him, or that you now know that you want to do that today. Or as we go through this, 
God's going to keep working on your heart, and then at some point you are going to dive in fully and say, I need to believe, and I need to respond. You don't have to wait for anything to let God know that you want to have a free and true relationship with him. I can't wait to teach out of this book. It is going to be a lot of fun, but it will also be very challenging. So don't be afraid of that. Let God work in you to bring your life and your mind in line with his. Amen? Let's stand together. I told you, you guys, man, you guys, it's like breakfast time still. It's not even lunch yet. Uh, Romans chapter 1 next week, I'm going to teach you about who Paul was before he became Paul. Some of you probably already know that story. Um, the next week after that is the second half of Romans chapter 1. I want to encourage you guys to really read Romans chapter 1 over the next two weeks. That sermon two weeks from today, it's probably going to be controversial. Uh, and so I'm just going to put it out there and I want you to read it ahead of time um, and start forming some of your own thoughts. Pray about it. Ask God to, to reveal to you what he may want you to, to get out of that. So be in prayer. Read ahead. Um, but it will be in Romans chapter 1 for the next two weeks. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these wonderfully amazing and beautiful people that you have brought together to worship you, Father God. And I pray that as they go about their days and their lives uh, this week, that you would be um, at the forefront of every decision they make, that, that they would choose in every moment to follow you and to do what you've asked them to do, live in the way that you've asked them to live, to serve in the way that you've asked them to serve, and that they would be faithfully obedient to you so that they can profess their faith through their actions, profess their belief that Jesus was raised from the dead and that he has sent the Holy Spirit back to help us. Father God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful day.